I understand what the Duke and Duchess of Sussex feel about press intrusion and criticism of their lives, but I'm afraid in 21st century Britain it comes with the territory. You can argue it shouldn't, but it inevitably does. And I also understand why the Duke blames the paparazzi for the death of his mother and fears it might happen again. The trouble is, what does he do about it? Well, it could be that Harry and Meghan will only get the sort of life they want by leaving the UK and leading a more private life in Africa, one of Prince Harry's favourite places, or in the USA, where his wife comes from. It doesn't need to be a big deal or a great drama. Harry is sixth in line to the throne, so he won't be creating a constitutional crisis like his great-great-uncle did when he abdicated. He might just choose, like many Brits do these days, that he and his wife would have a better life living overseas. Harry and Meghan living abroad would be a loss to the royal family, but the House of Windsor has survived much bigger crises. I think watching that documentary, what became... There's a lot of things became clear to me. One, that um, Harry, to me, looks like he's unravelling. It's also clear from the comments that Will's made a day later that um, the, the rift that the press were all blamed for making up is very real and very deep and that uh, the pair of them aren't talking to each other at all. And I think because of that, I think because Harry has become separated from his family and seems, seems to be, you know, just camp him and Meghan, it's them against the rest of the world, he's lost all perspective on things. And I think this is part of the problem. There, there was one quote that really got me, said, every flash, every camera click takes me back 22 years. Well, you know, that, I think, is incredibly disturbing. Because, and, and actually, I just want to say this before anybody else comes in. Jane Moore, a colleague of ours and a very good friend yep. of ours, kind yep. of summed this up in her column yesterday and she said that, you know, he hadn't dealt properly with the death of his mum over the past few years. But what's happened since he's met someone that he loves and he treasures and now has a child, he cares about them every bit as much as he cared about his mum. And he has this irrational fear that he's going to lose them both. Um, and, and it's... I just think it's... I, I just think it's... He looks like he's unravelling because of that. I think it's very hard for a lot of people to, rec to reconcile her standing in a backdrop of South Africa where six million kids are starving, where they have the lowest life expectancy oh. rate. Well, it is on the planet. And talk about her first world problems the of pressure and truth. It doesn't recognise that respectfully, Carol. Well, I, it, I think, it, well, it kind it, of it, should. It, if you're campaigning for people well, whose situations are a million times worse than I, theirs. I, I believe in the old maxim, don't kick a bloke when he's down. And I think this bloke well, is um, down at the moment. Yeah. I think you're right in what you say. I wonder if he's ever, ever fully come to terms with the grief. What we have witnessed is that he was a real rambunctious mm -hmm. army boy, mm -hmm. wasn't he? Playing one of yes. Greg's favourite grain strip billiards, which I know you're a tremendous... <laughs> world, one of the world champions, indeed, <laughs> yeah. on that. Oh. Living the life of a soldier boy, falling in and out. And I don't say this disparagingly, doing what young mm -hmm. men do. Mm -hmm. Different number of girlfriends, lovely falling in and out of nightclubs. Then he finds love, a nation celebrates just over a year ago, and something, something has gone wrong. And I wonder whether one aspect is... And here we look at what William has achieved with Kate, or the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge. In Kate Middleton, she has a tremendous bedrock of a family. All the jokes that were made about, uh, about Kate's mum, all the jokes made about that and her background, that family, you can see, mm. are rock solid. Mm. Sadly, Meghan's family is mm. a little dysfunctional. Mm. So he hasn't got that to go to. His own family, he has a, an interesting relationship, obviously, with his father because mm. the marriage went out the way it did. I don't think you can say that... William and Harry aren't talking at all. Certainly when you talk about the majority of the time we're OK, that means the majority of the time you're not. They need this six-week break. And what Harry has to realise, and I say this from the heart, having covered more royals than you can have hot dinners, the nation loves this bloke. We want you to be well. If you need 12 weeks off, take 12 weeks off and come back What the Harry that we want to see and love. Well, Greg... Out of respect for you in this debate, I lost an hour of my life last night watching this ITV documentary because I must be honest, I'm not particularly interested in the royal family, so I, it's not the kind of thing that I would have watched if we weren't debating it today. And I found it quite interesting to watch and I would just pick up on something that you just said. You said that she's in South Africa where people are... She's basically like a million times better in, in a better place than mm. lots of the people. But what mm. I would say is the challenge with mental health and it... it 
doesn't care whether you're up here well, or down there. Or, mental health issues. No, what I'm okay. saying is I'm talking about because there's been a lot of um, uh, criticism on these two people about, well, how can they be down or how can they be frustrated because they've got this, they've got that, they have all this. So that was the first point I wanted to make, that whether, whether you're rich or poor Absolutely. or in the middle, your mental health challenges don't recognise or discriminate about that. That's the first point. Absolutely. The second point is I always, when I think of William and Harry, I think of them as little boys, particularly Harry, walking behind their mum's coffin. No, but those kind of things, whoever thought that that was a good idea to make those little boys walk behind their mum's coffin, it's beyond me. And since, you know, they have got so much focus on them. And what I don't understand, and I agree with you, if you don't like it, or it's not what you want, or it's causing you distress, they are in the, the good position to be able to step away from that. And I think that if it is causing them angst and all the rest of it, then they really should go and think about their other options. Yeah, that's right. I'm, 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 I'm incredibly sympathetic to both of them mm. in uh, where they find themselves. Yes, I'm very sympathetic. It, mine is not saying clear up. Mine is saying if you're if you're struggling to cope, you need to do something else. And it Self might be it, yeah, and you and it might be you have to go abroad to f to get that sort of freedom, to get the sort of away from the the pressure that you're inevitably going to be in this country. I mean, yeah, well, Prince William had a better time when he was doing a, a day job. Essentially, um, he said that it was it was rewarding when I come here to do this job. I really I really look forward to coming here every day, whether it's 5:30 a.m. or going to bed at two in the morning. The shift work is exciting. It's challenging. It's a variety. It's more than anything. That's somebody he was who enjoys air ambulance work. Though, yeah, wasn't yeah. But so he's some, so there is there are other lives that they could lead. Well, but if, I, they, well, if they go to the Bahamas, do they renounce the Duke? Of the titles, they no, just no, become no, Harry and Meghan. There's Wales. no need for that. Well, so they would still not, live on taxpayers' that's money. Not, they can live on their mother's money. They've got plenty. His mother's money. The money is not what it's about. It's about you want to give them the opportunity to uh, world as a family to get together without feeling under the sort of pressure. And he clearly, I mean, that line in that documentary that said, "He's a know, royal Greg." No, but no, no. Listen, that line in that documentary that said, and it showed quite clearly what you, what your economist said. That actually he didn't get over his mother's twenty, and you wouldn't think so if you, you know, you, you, the, what the family itself didn't help him through it, did no. it? No. What about the statement he made the following day, where he said um, there was a, there was a, a quote really where they said that they had single-handedly modernised the monarchy. When I was talking before about how I think they've both but lost perspective... That's I a think source, this is, though, within the I palace. It's I neither Harry nor Meghan said that. So it's unfair to attribute that to either of the couple when you well, think about everything it. we have is a source. I mean, that's, well, that's the, the whole point. But, but, but the two boys have modernised the royal family. But, well, but I the think, two boys I have think, done well, it. Yeah. But so has the Queen. This is a huge insult no, to the no, Queen. The Queen, who was hugely the, modernised the Queen the still runs a Victorian how? court. OK, let me tell you how. Ten years ago, Meghan would not have been able to marry Harry because ten years ago, an American divorcee of mixed race would not have been allowed to marry Harry. That's that's the modern yeah, the, the monarchy Harry is modernised. That. It wasn't the Queen that married Meghan. But she but she allowed that to happen. The Queen. What I'm telling you is, the Queen has modernised the monarchy. Wills has modernised the monarchy in exactly his <laughs> air ambulance. Yeah, but, but, well, <laughs> Harry going on the front line. Sorry, Femi, but Harry going on the front line, actually facing day. That is tremendous. I know his uncle did well, it. Femi I know Andrew, Andrew did it. Yes. It's fantastic, Femi. Yeah, it's and, and Charles. <laughs> sorry, the idea that you can attribute the modernisation of having um, people that aren't royals in the, in the royal family, people of, of ethnic back, minority ethnic backgrounds in the royal family, I said and, it's an example of and attribute that to, See, the, to the Queen. I said it's an example. Let's but, but, not, but, Femi, but, Femi, you're probably half my age. You're about a quarter of his age. Because goodness knows what Carol's age. Oh, does, don't you? Yes. What does the royal? Do you and your mate? Do you ever talk about the? I don't mean this rude. I'm really. Do you ever talk about the royal family? Or are they effectively meaningless? Possibly once a year. Like just at best. Like no. And what so, would it be? A romance or a marriage or? It'll be whenever whenever they produce a child or anything like that. Yeah. The, other than that, the royal family does not really exist in our discussions at all. Um, we true. love the, I mean, me personally, I love the fact that we have um, a queen, she's a great symbol, part of our identity, but no, it's not a regular source of conversation. But you don't understand the great esteem in which she's held, clearly. Well, the I, 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 I... Why'd you take that from <laughs> <laughs> because, because, you because, take that because he says the queen <laughs> does nothing particularly. No, the, no, no, what he said was... I, I just said she's an important part of our national identity. He said the queen wasn't responsible for the modernisation of the been. royal family, which he I think is right. Uh, I, but but I, would, I would say that we need to recognise the fact that, like, as you said before, emotion does not see privilege. If you've got, if you've, if you've lost your mum, that is something that will affect anybody, regardless yes. of what palace they happen to live in. And right now, Meghan, for example, she's a new mother, and I think it would be nice if the if the press took a, took cognizance of the fact that she's dealing with the idea of I'm just I'm just trying to raise a new child.